Hello everyone, I'm Chitra Lekha from the National University of Singapore. In this video, I will present our paper titled Signal Representations for Synthesizing Audio Textures with Generative Adversarial Networks. This work was done with my colleagues Poonima Kamath and Lance Weiss. In recent years, GANs have achieved the state-of-the-art performance in neural audio synthesis. One such system, GANSYNTH, uses a two-channel audio representation that consists of log magnitude spectrogram and instantaneous frequency. This two-channel representation has been shown to outperform other representations such as MFCCs and CQTs for synthesizing pitched musical instrument sounds. Instantaneous frequency is the derivative of the unwrapped phase of a signal with respect to time. Estimation of IF provides comprehensive information about the phase of the signal when the audio has clearly separated frequency components. Thus, IF spectrogram estimation results in a high-quality reconstruction of the time signal for pitched sounds, such as musical instruments. However, in broadband and noisy short-duration signals, reconstruction of the time domain signal from IF spectrogram is highly sensitive to IF estimation errors. This is because the frequency components in such noisy signals are overlapping and are not well separated. To test this, we simulated estimation error in the IF channel by adding a small Gaussian noise to it and then reconstructed the time signal. Let's listen to the pitched instrument first. The original and the resynthesized audio from the noisy IF. As you may see, there is hardly any difference between them. But now let's see what is its effect on a sharp transient pop sound. The original and the reconstructed. It is clear that IF is sensitive to estimation errors in these short duration noisy wideband sounds with closely spaced frequency components. So in this work, we propose an approach for sound texture synthesis that works for both pitched instrument sounds and transient noisy sounds like pops and chirps. We propose that training GANs on a single channel log magnitude spectrogram instead of a two channel IF spectrogram and using a non-iterative phase reconstruction technique called PGHI or phase gradient heap integration is a better and a more comprehensive approach for audio synthesis. Let's briefly discuss how PGHI works. PGHI estimates the phase from the log magnitude spectrogram when computed with a Gaussian window. Prosa and authors showed that the derivative of the log magnitude spectrogram with respect to frequency can be used to mathematically compute the derivative of phase along the time axis. Similarly, the derivative of spectrogram along time axis can be used to compute the derivative of phase along the frequency axis. And using these phase gradients, the phase of the signal can be estimated using heap integration technique. It is a numerical integration performed on these gradients along the most prominent contours of the spectrogram. This makes the phase estimation and as a result the time domain signal synthesis more robust to estimation errors and noise. For this paper, we explore three types of audio. On the one end of the spectrum, we have musical instruments from a subset of the nsynth dataset, which consists of brass, flutes, guitar, and other pitched instruments. Here's an example. On the other end of the spectrum, we tested pop sounds. Pops are a series of short bursts of noise passed through a bandpass filter. We generate these samples by controlling the rate and the center frequency of the bandpass filter. Here's an example. In between these two kinds of sounds are the chirps. A chirp is a signal in which the frequency increases or decreases quickly with time. Here's an example. We adopt the current state-of-the-art GAN synth architecture that consists of a progressively growing Wasserstein GAN where G is the generator and D is the discriminator. The IF method model uses a two-channel IF spectrogram representation while our proposed model uses a single channel log magnitude of Gabor transform of the signal, that is short time Fourier transform with a truncated Gaussian window. 
in the generation phase, the IF spectrogram estimated by the first method is inverted to a time domain signal using Librosa's inverse STFT, where the phase is estimated from the IF channel. For our proposed model, we use PGHI to reconstruct the audio signal from the estimated log magnitude spectrogram. The input to the generator is a 128-dimensional random vector that's drawn from a spherical Gaussian distribution, along with a one-hot conditional vector. This conditional vector is pitch for the musical instrument dataset and center frequency for the pop and the chirp datasets. The progressively growing GAN is trained in five stages, where in each stage, a new layer is gradually added to the existing stack of neural nets, therefore progressively generating a higher resolution output. We train all the models for 1.2 million iterations on batches of 8 samples. The window size is chosen as 5 and 2 samples. And we also wanted to test the effect of redundancy between frames in reconstruction. So we trained two models with hop sizes 64 and 128. To evaluate the quality of the generated sounds, we conducted subjective evaluation through human listening tests on Amazon Mechanical Turk. In each assessment task, the participants were asked to first listen to the reference, which was drawn from the original dataset, and then to the two synthesized audio clips, one from PGHI and the other from IF, randomly chosen. And then they were supposed to select the one they felt was the closest in sound quality to the reference clip or if they sounded similar. Here is an example. The reference clip Audio clip 1 and audio clip 2. Qualitatively, we observe that with the IF method, the sharp transients of the pop and the chirp sounds get smeared in time, whereas PGHI method produces clear and sharp transients. The smearing effect in time happens because of the inability of IF to provide robust estimation of phase when the signal contains closely spaced wideband frequency components. For NSYN data, however, the two methods sound approximately similar in quality. For both the hop sizes, the participants rated the PGHI model audio clips to be significantly better than the IF model audio clips for both pop sounds as well as chirps. But for the pitched instrument sounds, PGHI and IF are similarly rated for both the hop lengths. Comparison between the two hop sizes for the same method has shown mixed responses for the different data sets, indicating that more than 75% redundancy between consecutive frames may not have a significant impact on the reconstructed audio quality. To objectively evaluate the quality of the synthesized audio clips, we use Frechet Audio Distance, or FAD. FAD is a well-known evaluation metric that computes the distance between the statistics of the real and the synthesized data distributions. A lower FAD value means smaller distances between synthetic and the real data distributions. Consistent with the subjective tests, we observe that PGHI-generated audio distribution shows a smaller distance from the reference audio distribution as compared to that generated from the IF method. So to conclude, given all other settings are the same, such as training steps and architecture, the PGHI method outperforms the IF spectrogram method. Through subjective and objective measures, we show that integrating the PGHI representation and reconstruction techniques in the GAN framework generates better audio quality for noisy pops and chirps than when using the IF spectrogram method and the audio quality remains similar for pitched instruments. Data-driven training of GAN for controlled audio synthesis holds a lot of promise for creative applications such as sound design and music. This work presents a signal-independent representation for training such a network, which is an important step towards the universality and usability of this approach. The code for this work is available at the given link. You may also visit the companion website for more audio examples. Thank you for listening and see you at the conference.